ranked Alabama against the Volunteers of Tennessee. There seems to be some issue on the field. Yeah, there sure does. Might be a clock issue. Referee is Matt Austin. You know, Vern, uh, Alabama, I think more than any other team in college football right now is used to playing with the pressure of being number one. They just did it last year, the whole season almost. And when you play around here, you're used to playing with pressure. True. <laughs> Very true. 12 national champions. And uh, the glory is back. Uh, we have not been told. What I wonder if it's headphones. Ah. Father and son standing there. The father on the left with the uh, orange hat. That's Monty Kiffin. You know, you, you almost looking at Lane Kiffin there. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised, you know, that we're having problems here. <laughs> you know, Kiffin with a splash after he was hired as the 34 year old head coach at Tennessee. He tweaked the noses of uh, some of the Giants in coaching, beginning with Urban Meyer, including Steve Spurrier. Had his issues uh, prior to this game. He. Well. He wants to go. I, I think he understands it, though, at Tennessee, there's, you know, three main teams, you know, Florida, Alabama, and Georgia. Now, he didn't beat Florida, but he survived Florida. He beat Georgia. Let's see what happens today. Well, here is uh, what we have been told. The headsets, yeah, headsets. are not yep. working on the Tennessee side. That's what I thought. Well, Lane Kiffin asked about playing in this game as they try and sort this out. He uh, took a little elbow to uh, Urban Meyer in the Florida program again. I think one poll got it right. If you watch football and pay attention, no doubt he's number one. Alabama, a great team, very well coached, extremely talented, great special teams, great offense, great, you know. I, I will say this. The headphones might not be working, but the PA system is. <laughs> I am so <laughs> tired of this song. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much I can't goes everywhere. begin to tell you. Now remember, because the Tennessee headphones do not work, Alabama will probably have to the take Tennessee theirs off. Headsets are malfunctioning. Therefore, both teams will have to remove their headsets till the problem is fixed. Don't send him to fix it. Now re also remember. Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator for Alabama, is upstairs. Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, is downstairs. It shouldn't affect Tennessee as much. How does McElwain communicate with the sideline? No way. Can't do it. Might he think about going down? I don't think he believes it would be extended. If it is, though, if it becomes a problem, most of the first quarter, he would go down. Saw that. Two teams have returned kickoffs for touchdowns. Oh, he fair caught it. Wow. That's Baron Huber, number 40, with a fair catch. Let's go down to Tracy. Guys, they are scrambling right now, and I just spoke to an Alabama official, and they told me that Jim McElwain will come down if they can't get these headsets fi fixed right away, guys. Okay, Trace, thank you. You know, I don't think that would hurt Greg McElroy having your quarterback coach come down on the sideline the way he's been struggling. Last two games have really, really proven difficult for McElroy. He had the great start. He's a fifth-year senior, fourth-year junior, I beg your pardon. And this is first year as a starter. Right side, Ingram. And let's introduce you to the Alabama offense presented by Chick-fil-A. Carpenter, J.C. Transfer, Mike Johnson, Jones and Davis on the right side. Julio Jones, no catches last week against South Carolina. Marquise Mays is on the right side. It's second down and seven. Sweep to the right. Not much there. Out to the 26. Tackle made by Chris Walker, number 84. 
Defensively for Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, Martin Brown, Dan Williams, and Chris Walker. The linebackers, they've lost Reveas for the year. The middle, Savion, Savion Frazier, takes his spot. And in the secondary, the All-American Eric Berry, the most noticeable name, Jansen Jackson, having a very good season. The headsets, we are now told, are operating. Watch out, McElroy. Incomplete pass. He did get rid of it. Eric Berry untouched four from the field it's the new college and pro blitz actually not that new it's been about five years that people have been bringing four from one side left side right there there's Barry you cannot turn out you got to leave the outside guy unblocked turn out the tackle did that time Carpenter and leave Eric Barry a free path to McElroy that brings on P.J. Fitzgerald, three and out for Alabama. Dennis Rogan is back to return it. Nice high, fairly deep. Rogan backs up, grabs it at the 21. Gets a good block. There's no flag on that block. And the return out near the 47-yard line. Ali Sharif made the tackle, but a 49-yard punt return 23 yards. You know, the patience by Rogan right here, usually when a team starts playing like a big game, a number one team, everybody's so excited. But Tennessee has been patient early in this game, and Dennis Rogan took that punt, very patient and very positive. Jonathan Crompton had a great game against Georgia. He's not had great games in the previous five. So, uh, boy, he is part of the puzzle today, huh? He is. He had a wonderful game against Georgia, but it was almost all on the bootleg game. Let's see if he can do that against Alabama. Backs in the eye. Hardesty is the deep back. He'll get the handoff. And a couple of yards out near the 49. Perhaps the 50. Terrence Cody makes the tackle. Offensively for Jonathan Crompton and the Volunteers. Just saw Hardesty, the running back, up front in the line. Scott, the Sullins twins, both starting for the second week in a row. McClendon, right guard, and Douglas. Hardesty and Brown in the backfield. Stock of the tight end, Gerald Jones and Nukis Richardson. Crompton, and it's knocked down nicely by Corey Reamer, number 13. One thing that Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator of Alabama, said is we must take away the flat throws from Jonathan Crompton. Georgia gave him all the easy throws early in that game with bootlegs and sneaks. Compton got his kind of confidence going, and then they could never turn it off. Reamer, McLean, Johnson, and Anders, and in the secondary, Arenas, Baron Woodall, and Kareem Jackson on third down. Nice pass, left side. Denarius Moore, number six. Wow, he won this at the line of scrimmage against Kareem Jackson. Watch him win early. Wins right there to get inside like that against an Alabama technique. That is good coaching, and that is a great route. That's also a gain of 15 and a first down as Demarius Moore, the junior out of Tatum, Texas, gets his 13th catch of the season. Crompton with the audible. They'll bring it left side, Hardesty. And he's inside the 35, near the 33-yard line. Terrence Cody and uh, Brandon Dedrick with the tackle for Alabama. This also is the number one defense, Gary, in the country statistically. Yeah, and they, they've earned it. I mean, uh, this, this defense shut down Ole Miss completely in that football game. Nick Saban said it's one of the best he's ever been associated with. Second and eight. To 
Nasty caught and dropped by Javier Arenas. The senior from Tampa, such a stellar member of this defensive backfield, did not play because of an injury yeah. last week. He was lined up right on the line of scrimmage right there. You think you'd have to block him to run the ball directly at him. And remember, you said he checked to the play. That's a loss of six. Third and 14. Here's the part. Can this offensive line hold up in long yardage passing situations? Alabama with three down. See how many they bring. Crompton almost has it picked off under pressure. Boy, and Mark Tennessee Barron thought they was were, up there. Excuse yep. me, Vern. That's all right. Tennessee is shocked that that was not an offside call. So was I. Yes. <laughs> Let's look. Let's see if it was timed perfectly or not. Well, it was moving right when the ball was Lorenzo Washington, number 97, was moving just as the ball moved. I think it's a good no call. So Lorenzo Washington with the pressure. That forces an incomplete pass. It's fourth down. Javier Arenas, who needs only 110 return yards to become the all-time leader in the SEC. Not going to get it here as he calls for the fair catch and takes it at the 20-yard line. No score. First down, 10. McElroy steps up across the middle. Dropped. Wow, Darius Hanks, number 15. Barry might, might have gotten a hand on that. He may have, but that was a good throw by McElroy. But, you know, by some counts, different people have talked about that Alabama has dropped recently 13 pass. I think Barry did tip that ball. That's not a drop. But there's been some counts of 13 drop balls by the Alabama receivers lately. Here's Ingram. Goes over right tackle and uh, tight end. How about a, that? That was an all-American play by Eric Berry right there. I mean, that tip ball, he laid out completely. If he doesn't tip it, that's a huge play for Alabama. Another look at the end of it, Gary. Lays out and just tips that ball. What a play. Pretty good player, isn't he? Yeah, he, he may get to play on Sundays. So. <laughs> Let's see if he blitzes here again. He blitzed last time. Doesn't look like. Looks like Tampa 2. McElroy back. Steps up. Not known as a runner, but that's a pretty nifty move. And he might have enough for the first down. He does. Out to the 31. Jansen Jackson, number 15, with the tackle. Good block from Roy Upchurch, number five. Some people wonder why Julio Jones isn't catching a lot of balls. Julio Jones wants one right there. He was open, but McElroy didn't like the coverage and picked up a first down. That time, Monty Kiffin doubled Julio Jones. He did not catch a pass last week. First time in his career that Jones went without a reception. Here's a quick screen out to the left side and a big hole. A first down at the 46. Guess who? On cue, Julio. Well, he's just too good of a player not to get the football. You have to scheme ways, if you're Alabama, to get the ball to this football player. I don't believe they can win the national championship, which is the goal, with just Mark Ingram. They must have Julio Jones. Look at that graphic. It's uh, just stunning to see the numbers here early in the eighth game of the year. First down and 10. Play fake. McElroy, Julio Jones tipped away again, this time by Dennis Rogan, number 41. Well, one of the keys to an Alabama attack is the blocking of their tight ends. Colin Peak, number 84, got hurt in pregame. Look at that. He's highlighted to the right side. Lorenzo Washington trips over his knee. He tried. He started the football game, but he's now been declared out of the game. Now he went down. He did try and play. Still on the sideline, but has been declared out of this one. Second down. And off. Draw play. Ingram, nothing. Paul Rhodes, who was defensive coordinator down at Auburn a year ago. Yes, he was. Yeah. Third down. McElroy 
That's a little high, but Jones has it. Breaks the tackle, gets a first down. Two catches for Julio Jones. And a positive start for McElroy. This was a great protection scheme by Alabama. Upchurch lined up left and came across to protect him. Julio Jones one on one, easy pitch and catch against Rogan. You know, it's funny talking to Greg McElroy, Vern. He said, My early success created pressure on me to continue it. Usually you think if a guy starts bad, he gets pressure. Mm -hmm. It was the opposite for, Gre for Greg. Well, Jim McElwain chatting with us, and we chatted with both yesterday. Here's the handoff to Trent Richardson. The freshman goes left and picks up uh, three or four. McElroy said, uh, I'm a perfectionist. He's never lost as a starter, 16 and 0 as a high school senior. Jim McElwain said he's gotten a little overwhelmed by yeah. everything. The speed of the defenses. Well, he faced two really good defenses. I mean, uh, you know, Ole Miss in South Carolina's front four as you know Mike Johnson told us his left guard who's you know, you know big senior and seen it all he said those were like NFL type front fours they had talent all over the front four and they kind of overwhelmed us a bit. Um, Alabama calls a timeout something was askew they're in the midst of a mini drive and the big news for Alabama fans is that Julio Jones has two catches. We'll return to Bryant Denny right after this. Vern, let's also point out that Colin Peake is also the leading receiver for Alabama this year with 19 catches. Ironically, Mark Ingram's number two. Yes, that's right, out of the backfield. Yes. That's Marquise Mays, number four, who starts in motion. McElroy, short, the underneath man, the catch is made. Richardson with the reception. That's his 10th of the year. Enrico McCoy made the stop. You know, I, I like this drive for Alabama. Tennessee is really running the ball, running to the ball on defense. Remember, we talked to Eric Berry, and he said the key to this game is gang tackling for us. You can tell they're running to the ball, so a little bit of misdirection and quick passing is giving problems right now to Tennessee. Tennessee looks... Uh, Oh, they are not blitzing. They dropped their linebackers. Here's McElroy. That sailed on him. Boy, the minute it left his fingertips, it started wobbling. Well, it's an in-between yardage right here. Would Nick Saban consider going for this? 38-yard line, a little far for a field goal. I think he might. Lee Tiffin's longest field goal this year is 48. And it appears they're going. Now, there's a substitution problem on the sidelines and finally Earl Alexander number 82 hurries into the huddle. So on fourth down and five they'll go for it. Upchurch is also on the field. Four man rush for Tennessee McElroy backs up. Oh, you Upchurch can't throw that pass. And, and you can't throw that pass. But you cannot dump it that quick. That's what exactly what Jim McElwain was talking about. He's going through his reads too quickly. This is a fourth down pass and he dumps it off for a one yard throw here. You've got to throw the ball down the field in this situation or at least take as long as you can before you dump it off. That is just a young player without a lot of experience going through his reads too quickly. You could throw to anyone else but the back in that situation. And so the ball goes over on downs. Tennessee holds. They've got the football. Who was? I think Jones was. Yes. Yeah. Well, welcome back to Bryant Denny. 92,000 plus on hand. Scoreless first quarter, 6 16 remaining. As Greg McElroy threw to Roy Upchurch far short of the needed yardage for the first down. And Tennessee has it back with Jonathan Crompton in at quarterback. Well, Tennessee had a field day against Georgia running the bootleg package and what the Alabama coaches call the sneak package. I'll show it to you if they do it, but so far they have not showed it. Jones and Denarius Moore, the wide receivers, backs in the old conventional eye. 
This does have the feel of an old-fashioned football game. Oh, yeah. Nick said it's an N the closest to an NFL game he's coached since he's been at Alabama. Now, split backs. Crompton goes down the far sideline, has his man. This is Hardesty out of the backfield. What a throw. I mean, Alabama thought if they could keep Crompton in the pocket, they had him at their mercy. But a first down throw here by Jonathan Crompton, you cannot throw a football any better than this. Did not let him put a lot of air on it and put it right on the hands of Hardesty. Marquise Johnson was defending number 24. That is a 26-yard gain and a first down. That one looked ugly. Couple of flags and the ball on the ground. We'll check the laundry list. Dead ball, snap infraction, 69 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. I think left guard, no, it was actually on the center that time. Yeah, well, Sullins, they look yes, alike. Yes, that's right, they're, they're twins. twins. That's that's fair. They he, probably growing up were blamed for a lot of things they didn't do. With <laughs> other... <laughs> Fourth set of twins to play for Tennessee, but uh, the first in a generation, the last were Reggie and Raleigh McKenzie. You remember them? Yes. In the early 80s. First down and 15. Jones near side. Hardesty gets the handoff and goes right. Gets a couple. Three wide receiver set, two to the left. That would be Jones and Marcellus Teague. Now the motion from Teague, play fake. Crompton, a lot of time. Goes deep, intercepted. Picked off by Mark Barron who a week ago returned an interception 77. This play was mis a mistake since the beginning of the play. The back or the quarterback turned the wrong way and did not get a good fake on the play, and it just got worse. Watch the back and the quarterback go opposite directions. No fake, and Barron's in the middle of the field. It looks like a two-deep shell, and then it goes to a one-deep safety. It's just a poor throw. It wasn't a misread, but I think the bad fake and the miscommunication threw off Crompton, and the play never looked right. Now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Action Cam. I'm going to excuse Monterio Hardesty because I think he saw... Javier Arenas coming on the blitz and he just gave up the fake and said, I'm gonna protect my quarterback. He didn't realize that Luke Stocker had him anyway, but he said safety first. There's really no excuse for this throw. It was just a poor throw and an interception. Fourth interception of the season by Mark Barron, Crompton and Hardesty having a chat. Probably talking about exactly the thing yeah, it, it, you pointed I, out. I think the back might have done the right thing. Let's protect the quarterback first. Here's McElroy, left side, caught. Julio Jones, third catch here in the first quarter. All right, Tim, Wildcat. Mark Ingram will take the direct snap. We assume he does. Handoff, Richardson comes right, spins, breaks two tackles, and that worked pretty well. It sure did. And you know, when we visited with Mark Ingram yesterday, one of the questions I asked Mark is, compare Trent Richardson from where you were a year ago. And he goes, oh, he's way ahead of me. And you know, everybody who's watched this guy play knows he's got a world of talent. And between Ingram and Richardson, that might be as good a one-two combination as there is in college football. Ingram stays on the field in the Wildcat. Richardson is split to the left side. One of the more memorable drives of this year was last week against South Carolina when Ingram did this yep. for 68 yards. And the cinching touchdown in the win over South Carolina, Mark Ingram picked up 246 yards on the ground. In, in that, that drive, it was the only drive of the game. It was the only touchdown of the game for Alabama. And Ingram carried the ball on every attempt in every play in that drive, the last one was a pitch out from Greg McElroy, but every play of the drive prior to that, Ingram rushed the ball. Let's see what he's... Uh... You know, Tennessee, Vern, excuse me, still two deep safeties against this Wildcat. I don't know if you can stop it with two deep safeties. Here's your answer.
I think you got to load the line of scrimmage. 25-yard gain, Ingram. And I think there's a flag. There is a flag at the... Uh... Here's the Wildcat right here. Two tight ends pulling the tackle. Gets a block on Rogan, number 41. And there's the space right there for Mark Ingram right into the secondary. Block in the back on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still results in a first down. And no number given. So it is a first down, and then the 10-yard penalty. I think Monty Kiffin is going to have to come out of these two deep safeties against the Wildcat. I just don't think they have enough people up front to start stop all these running angles from the Wildcat. And now McElroy will trot back on the field. Mark Ingram will get a rest. Trent Richardson is uh, on the field. Uh, Mark Ingram was telling us that he hit a real wall in the middle of the season. He said his two worst games last year were this game against Tennessee and the game against LSU. In this game a year ago, Mark Ingram won carry for four yards. Here's Richardson. He's got some gifts of his own. And he gets to the 35-yard line. Rico McCoy with the tackle. Now Mark Ingram got to know him a little bit bit this year just a, a delightful gregarious spell. unbelievable yeah. yeah and think about it three weeks ago he was not mentioned in any Heisman no. Trophy conversation. No, he's in the middle of it now Kentucky 140 next game 172 and last week 246 on the ground because of the injury injury to peak Brad Smelly number 17 is playing more now Smelly's the slot to the right McElroy with time across the middle incomplete at the 24. He won the Midwest Junior Nationals twice, consistently broke 80, and guys, his best score is 69. Interference call as Jones was the intended receiver. See, that's why Julio Jones has to have passes thrown to him. He's so physical that when the blitz package comes for Monty Kiffin, and it's going to come, when you get inside the 25, 30-yard line, he'll blitz. He's so physical, Passing you almost have to interfere him. Defense number 41. Ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Watch him play basketball here. He gets inside position, and he slows down. Look at that. He's almost a post player, and there's nothing Rogan could do but come over the back. Jones comes near side. Hanks. And Marquise Mays break off to the left. And Ingram is back on the field. Right side, Jones. Big part of the game in the early going after being blanked last week. I, I know you looked at a lot of film. I did. Why was he not getting the ball? He oh, was open enough times, but the last two games, I don't think Greg McElroy really understood the speed of the SEC defenses until he played against Old Miss in South Carolina. He was out of his comfort zone and it affected number eight. Well, McElroy said he uh, he tried to work on his footwork as much as anything else. As Gary suggested a while ago in that fourth down play, just uh, not waiting for things to develop. There's a quick one behind the intended receiver. Intended for Michael Williams. I don't think he ever saw it. Upchurch on. This was just a real inaccurate throw by McElroy. He looks outside. He's got his tight end wide open, and he throws that ball about three yards off target. On a short pass, there's no time for a receiver to make that play. And that kind of highlights the problem of McElroy. I know we're on the 21. But he has not been effect effective in the red zone throwing the ball. His stats are even tough to put up. They're so bad. Third and four. Stunts. McElroy. Stripped away. It's going to be incomplete. Looked like the catch was made. And then the defender, Marsalis Johnson, got a hand in and knocked it free from Brad Smelly's hands that's going to bring the field goal unit on and again I know they're not in the red zone technically but they really are right there another drop pass by Smelly this time but McElroy came into this game eight for 29 in the red zone I'd really call it eight for 31 now and that really hurts this Alabama team putting touchdowns on the board 
Tiffin's extra uh, field goal is up. And it's good. And with that uh, successful three pointer and the applause of Nick Saban, Lee Tiffin becomes the number two all time scorer in Alabama history. Three nothing. Brian Denny Stadium. It began here in 1929. It was called Denny Stadium until 76. Top of the screen, top right hand. That's a new addition going on. It should be open by next year. We'll increase the capacity to 100,000. With that field goal, Tiffin now uh, trailing Philip Doyle. But look who's number four on the all time list. That's his father, Van, played here in the early 80s. The kickoff will be taken by Nukees Richardson, a couple of freshmen back for Tennessee. And he's out across the 30, near the 32 yard line. Tackle made by Tyrone King, number 20. Well, very interesting now what Lane Kiffin will do on offense. His quarterback, Jonathan Crompton, who had such an outstanding game last week, throws a pick early. How, will they be able to run the ball against that, as Lane Kiffin called it, NFL-ish triangle inside with Terrence Cody and Rolando McClain? What, two yards rushing? Yes. Yeah. They have to run the ball to win this game. Bryce Brown is in now, the freshman out of Wichita. He gets one. Javier Arenas. Well, you can see the game plan for Nick Saban's defense. He is bringing people off the edges to really combat that bootleg game, but it's turning up into sacks and stopping the run game. It's basically a nine-man, almost a nine-man front it kind of forces your quarterback to throw the ball quickly. Slants, quick outs, quick hooks. Luke Stocker at the tight end is split. That's Gerald Jones in motion. So an empty backfield on second and nine. Quick set up. Crompton has him open. It's Hardesty. The running back split wide to the left. And a huge gain to the 41. I just said they need to throw quick slants against them. That This is what they're giving them. They're forcing Jonathan Crompton to beat them. And the second time Kareem Jackson has gotten beat on a slant, and this time by a running back against a starting corner. And Ontario Hardesty, that's quite a deal. And he's hurt on the sidelines, limped off. Second big catch he's made today. Backs in the eye. Brown weaves his way inside the 35. And Nico Johnson, who is uh, taking the place of Dante Hightower in the starting lineup. Hightower, knee injury the last time we were here. The win over Arkansas, and he's out for the year. That's the end of the first quarter with a score of 3-0. Alabama will return to Bryant-Denny Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. We began quarter number two. Three nothing Crimson Tide, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, and our crew here at Bryant Denny. Second down and three at the 34. Bryce Brown is the running back. And he'll get the handoff and come right. Bangs his way down near the 30 yard line. It appears he'll have enough for the first down as uh, Tennessee is inside the 30 for the first time. Uh, we began the day talking about the two quarterbacks, McElroy, Crompton, both a little shaky so far. Well, I, I still think both of them are trying to earn the trust from their coaches and offensive coordinators to have the plays called necessary to really be effective against the two defenses. Showed some flashes, but not consistent enough, I think, for either coach. Back at the line now, and it'll be first down and 10 for Tennessee. Left side, Brown tries to get outside, and he is nailed as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Montario Hardesty limped off a moment ago after that big uh, catch, and he's going to be okay. Yeah, and you know what? He's more than okay as a football player for Tennessee. He may be the comeback player in the SEC this year. He's turned into a dependable, durable, determined football player with a lot of skill catching the ball. Actually, his first year as a starter, Montario Hardesty, 
He began this season with 160 yards in the opener. He's been around 100 per game ever since. And here's the handoff. This will be third and long. Well, averaging over 100 yards when you take all the big games and projected to win. These projections can get a little scary, but he is projected to finish the year with 100, 1,344 yards. Travis Stevens in 01, the all-timer. Let's see this play call. Will they try to protect Jonathan Crompton in field goal range with like a screen or something like that or throw the ball downfield? Two wides to the right. Alabama's blitzing. Here comes Arenas inside. It's caught. This is Denarius Moore, and he's got a first and goal, Tennessee. Again, the slant pass that has been effective for Tennessee, getting rid of it quick, and Crompton put it right there. It's a four-man rush from the field. Oh, a slip that time against Justin Woodall. That's an interesting position. Your safety covering receiver. Remember, we had a corner covering a running back. Now we have a safety covering a receiver. First and goal. David Oku, true freshman, number 27, on the field. He gets the handoff, and he'll work his way down near the five. They're going to spot it just outside of the six-yard line. See Tennessee's red zone numbers, 16 and 7, touchdown to field goal ratio. Well, remember, they early in the year, they tried to hammer it in against UCLA on four straight plays, and they didn't get it in the end zone? Well, they try to hammer it in against Bama. Nope. Crompton, out of the backfield, dropped. And that's why Rolando, excuse me, that's why it was Johnson that time. Nico Johnson, the freshman. We mentioned Dante yes. Hightower, who uh, was hurt. Nico Johnson, season, right? number 35, yes, playing the spot for Hightower. Reads his play well. You can tell that this team is ready for the backs out of the backfield. Terrence Mount Cody tilts the earth as he hurries off. It's third down. He still hasn't earned the right, uh, according to the coaches, to play on third and long. Here's Crompton with a lot of time deep in the end zone, way too high, but good coverage back there from Marquise Johnson, number 24. But a smart throw. You know, it, it wasn't there. Justin Woodall, the safety, was squatting right in the spot, and he put it where his guy or nobody could get it. I think this is Woodall right here. He's squatting right where the ball wants to go, so he has to throw it over Woodall's head. And that's what you do as a quarterback. Either your guy gets it or nobody. Save the three points. Daniel Lincoln has only missed twice this year. This is a 24-yarder for the tie. Got it. That was a very low trajectory. Let's watch out for that later. Lincoln did not get that ball up in the air at all. The Volunteers do, however, get the field goal. There's Rolando McLean. Well, the earth moved as Cody, well north of 300 pounds, <laughs> lumbers. There's a definition of lumbering. What can happen, of course, but boy, they're on a collision course right now. And here is the kick taken by Terry Grant, number 29, heads to the left of the field, gets a block from Huber. Still got a lot of opposition, and he's uh, out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Savion Frazier, number 43, made the stop. Remember, Tennessee is trying to kick the ball away from Arenas, and Terry Grant does a nice job of setting up and getting outside of Barry there. Let's see if... Alabama, the real success they had was in the Wildcat. Well, let's see if they go back to it, because right now, Greg McElroy, well, the other success has been Julio Jones, too. Yep. That's worked a little also. McElroy, 6 of 13 so far. Throws it outside. It's Julio Jones. Yep. 
Herman Lathers makes the stop. It's a 12 yard gain for Julio Jones. Well, he didn't get a ball last week, and Jim McElwain, you can see, has circled his game plan to say, we have to get number eight the ball. You know, two weeks ago against Ole Miss, though, 15 passes were thrown his way, and Greg McElroy told us that nine of them were forced, the improper reads. This time, it looks like they're scheming a little bit better, and he is one-on-one -on -one when he's getting the ball. Here's the inside handoff to Richardson, and he uh, plunges down to the 39-yard line. All right, Tim, thank you. It's 3-0, 3-3 here, and uh, Alabama driving. They're inside the 40-yard line. Marquise Mays in motion to the right. Pass is complete. Out on the right side. Catch made by Michael Williams, number 89. Like he, it looked like he stepped out of bounds right on the line there. Let's see where it's spotted. Right on a. Well, they've spotted it at the 35. I think they're right. Ball is, he catches it and steps out right on the 35. Good call. Side judge right there mm -hmm. on the call. Nice to point out some good calls. I was just, <laughs> I was just thinking it. I know. Everybody I was not going to say Everybody it. Everybody was. He had to do it. <laughs> Third and two. Oh dear. <laughs> well, we're alluding, of course, to one of the items that made news in college football this week, and that was the suspension of uh, an SEC officiating crew, the crew that worked the Arkansas Florida game. Last week, they have been suspended until November 14th. It was the same crew that worked the uh, controversial LSU Georgia yeah. game earlier. And Iowa sneaking up there. They could go 8 0, and of course, the quarterback from Cincinnati who's winning without him again today. Boy, Brian Kelly doing a job with Cincinnati. Here's the sweep to Richardson. And of course, all of us uh, mourning the loss of Jasper Howard, the defensive back, UConn. Very methodical again, drive. This is the way. Kind of Alabama kind of does it to you, you know? I mean, it's uh, balanced, sometimes boring, sometimes brilliant. But they win. McElroy, a little pressure, goes deep. Nope. Good double coverage down around the five yard line. It was intended for Julio Jones. i tell you, that was a very nice throw that time by Greg McElroy again. Man to man coverage. He knows he's got help inside. Art Evans knows the safety's there. The ball's thrown just a foot too far, but it's better than it's a foot too short. And boy, I'll tell you, if you want to watch some guy play football, watch Dan Williams. You know, we watched Mike Malcolm Shepard last week. Watching tape for me, Dan Williams is every bit the player as Malcolm Shepard is. On third down, Upchurch replaces Ingram. And here comes the rush, McElroy. Way short of the line lack, of scrimmage. Lack of confidence in your quarterback. Third and long, and you throw a one-yard pass. Right now, Greg has not earned that confidence from Nick Saban. He's not going to allow his quarterback to beat him in the first half of this game. Well, we mentioned the great start that McElroy had. Uh, and he's really tailed off in the last two games. But this afternoon, much more effective. And they will try the field goal from 50 yards away, officially 50. Tiffin, his career long back in 2008. That's very low. Very good. But it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it without the tape. Yeah, we had tape gate last week. There was a. Alabama was using little tiny, tiny pieces of tape. Look at this. Well, what the heck? Lee Tiffin climbs closer to Philip Doyle. Chances are good he's going to be the all-time Alabama scorer. Smokey's here, hoping for something to bark about. But his team trails by three, six-three. You know, Mike Johnson telling us yesterday. His first Tennessee Alabama game was a 6 3 final. Remember that? Yes. And 
You know, we're about one third through this game, and I got to believe both sidelines are happy, but Lane Kiffin is really happy right now. Mm -hmm. This is taken by David Oku. Oh, he's got a little room. And he's tackled at the 30. Well, Jonathan Crompton, big question mark coming in. How would he play? Well, it's not easy against this Alabama defense, but when he's thrown the ball for completions, look how accurate he's been. These guys are not wide open. He's putting the ball right on money. These are four great NFL right on the numbers throws. And look, look what this Alabama defense does to quarterbacks. Not easy. A combined 42% against SEC quarterbacks. Crompton is four of nine today. He's under center. Hand off left side. Montario Hardesty. Wow. Knocked down. And it's led by Corey Reamer, number 13. I tell you to run against that inside triangle of Alabama. You got the big guy. Cody inside taking up space. I don't even know if that was Cody that time to tell you the truth. But guys taking up space inside and then the quick reads by the inside linebacker that time it was Reamer. Second down nine. Crompton there's a bootleg rolls out lofts it. Incomplete just across the 50. Denarius Moore number six. The intended. Receiver. Yeah. <laughs> kind of had a laugh on that boo like pass. That time Alabama had four guys almost on the numbers defending that boot like they are ready for it. Chavis Williams, number 55, is in the football game. He's one of those guys he's actually playing rush end and taking Dante Hightower's spot at that rush end spot in the nickel. 39. He's right there. Crompton drills it tipped. Kareem Jackson got a hand on it, knocked it over the head of the intended receiver. Well, this is what you got to do. There's nobody better at the nickel package in college football than Nick Saban and Kareem Jackson that time he's gotten beat a couple times, but that time he was looking for the square in and he made a play on it. Chad Cunningham on the punt for the second time. He will do so to the always dangerous Javier Arenas. Six return for touchdowns, as you can see, and a career average. This is almost a rugby style. He didn't yeah. run to the right. But he didn't want to give Arenas any Absolutely. chance. Absolutely. That was by design. We'll take what it basically what Tennessee's special teams are saying is we'll take 30, 31 yards. So the Crimson Tide get it back with a lead of three. On first down. Here's McElroy, four-man rush. He comes to his left and then fires it to Preston Dial. Again, just to update you, Colin Peake, the starting tight end, injured in the pregame warmups. He tried to go. He managed one play from scrimmage and uh, couldn't make it. So he's on the bench. And he takes 19 catches and a lot of blocking ability with him, the transfer from Georgia Tech. Yeah, coming into the game, a very valuable, versatile tight end, the leading receiver for Alabama. Here's your Wildcat. McElroy is wide to the right side the quarterback and Ingram takes the direct snap skips through this has been their best formation in the game yeah. Julio Jones the passing game and Ingram from the Wildcat has been the most success they've got nine people look at Monty Kiffin has adjusted nine people at the line of scrimmage they have adjusted now we asked Mark Ingram if he can throw and he said well I, I thought I can I could but I had bad one in practice and they said I'd ruin my chances we'll see yeah McElwain said they do have the pass in for him but Ingram didn't sound like he was very confident right. they were going to call it third is very short right yep whoa is that a is that a delay that's uh, well, we're about 
Alabama. Time out. Second time out of the half. So a coach must have called timeout from the sideline to save it. Boy, do I hate that rule. Do you? Yeah, I, I mean, you can't, you run a play and it doesn't count. That timeout in football should be called on the field. It's not basketball. Usually it is. Yeah, that's a <laughs> fess up, you bet. Third and short. Ingram. Easy first down, out wow. to 45. Now that was impressive by that Alabama offensive line that time. They just mashed him back. This makes the Alabama staff feel good about the ability to create movement up front. Just a push back against that defensive line for Tennessee. They just walled him and pushed him. Ingram actually gained about two and a half yards before everyone, anyone even had a chance to tackle him that time. Now McElroy will break the huddle and go wide to the right. We're going to have Ingram take the direct snap again. Look at all the coverage McElroy's getting out there. Here's Ingram. Savion Frazier makes the tackle number 43. Just really doesn't make a lot of sense. Tennessee is playing the formation instead of the players this time. You got a safety way back here in a corner covering the quarterback. When he comes in motion, there's no adjustment. You got Julio Jones on the other side going one on one. Wonder if his wild fantasies McElroy ever envisioned that he potentially yeah, was double, get coverage. double coverage. Let's see what happens this time. He's out there again. And, and he's he's very deep lined up too. They, you know they got a pass from this formation. All right, McElroy in motion. Ingram. They're mashing them, aren't they? Yeah, they sure are. That pile, the pile is moving north at yes, the snap. Yes, it really is. He does that little juke step, doesn't yeah, he? At, he times it out. Since he doesn't get the handoff, he times it up, waiting for his backside tackle and end to come in. It's almost like the counter OT. Remember the old time Washington Redskins used to run that counter play? They're doing it from Wildcat with the tackle and that other tight end coming from behind. Here's another thing about Mark Ingram coming into the game. He had never fumbled, lost a fumble. He had fumbled once. And that was last year in the LSU game that Alabama recovered. Here's the pass, and it's caught, completed for 40, another first down. This is Darius Hanks, number 15, from Greg McElroy. Well, this will please Alabama fans. Watch Greg McElroy look to his left first and then come back. He wants to go left. It's not there. He comes back to the right and finds his receiver. The umpire had to duck. But that would please the Alabama staff and fans. That's what you want your quarterback to do. Now McElroy on the sidelines. And Trent Richardson is in. He's uh, split to the left. Well, if it's working, why not do it again? Wow, what a nice little spin move to the 35-yard line. Dennis Rogan with a tackle. Well, we talked about how Ingram runs through tackles. He may be the best back in college football through contact. He runs through one, two, and three tackles before he gets to. It's not a 70-yard game, but it adds up. One, two, look at the extra yards. And he's averaging six yards per carry in this one. McElroy back in with a play fake. A lot of time, but he better get rid of it. He does. And it's caught by the fullback, Baron Huber. In the face of a pretty serious rush. It's hard to criticize a quarterback on a completion, but he had Julio Jones one-on-one -on -one with no safety in the play. He dropped it off very successfully here, and you got to give him credit. But down the middle of the field, I thought he had a shot to throw it up to Julio for Julio to make a play. It is a first down for this methodical Alabama drive. And McElroy and Ingram both in the backfield here. Ingram stays in. Down the middle, caught. Marquise Mays, number four, first down at the 11. Well, the Tennessee defense is showing lanes, and right now Greg McElroy has found his confidence in finding the receivers against the zone this time. He runs right through the linebacker and makes the play another Good pitch and catch from the Alabama quarterback. That is a gain of 18. Now then, the red zone difficulties yeah. come to mind. But Alabama's so tough. When they got their quarterback hitting passes, they're tough. 
And off. Sweet. Ingram. Out of bounds right at the five. Dennis Rogan, Savion Frazier, numbers 41 and 43 you know, with the stop. College football has all these spread offenses and options and everything. This just, just seems like an NFL game, doesn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, you just little pitch and catch, a little slant, power, power, power. This has NFL feel all over it from Saban and Kiffin. You know, Elaine Kiffin took two timeouts on defense uh, a, a week ago, two weeks ago, and I'm wondering if their defense isn't gassed here. Here's McElroy, quick setup, looking left the whole time. Is that, oh boy, intended for Jones and almost picked off by Rogan. One-on-one -on -one to the outside. It's been Rogan's job the whole time. Kind of a funny head fake that time from Julio Jones. Kind of flashed up too high. He'd have been better kind of staying low in his crouch. Rogan did not go for the fake. This will be third and two at the four, the 12th play of the drive. Only one of their last nine possessions. Marquise Mays right side, Jones left side. McElroy. Now, now that is an interference. Boy, it, you know, I got to be honest. Those were two very curious calls for me. The way they were mashing the ball down the field, and then they went back to back against Julio Jones. That ball was not touchable. Julio Jones did not go to the outside. I think that's a good no call. Jones stopped too soon. That ball was to the outside. I, you know, I don't know why they did not ram that ball inside. Instead, they're going to settle for the attempt for three. Kippen's field goal is up and good. Boy, they just mashed them all the way down the field, and then they got fancy. The anti-NFL game. Yes. <laughs> as, I, as I'm thinking back to that last drive by Alabama, didn't they on first down gain like eight yards, Ingram down to that, and it was second and short and then they two to passes i mean that's you know that a score there is a whole lot different than nine three tennessee gets the ball to start the second half they got all three timeouts right now let's see how they play this taken by david oku number 27 he's going to be met and tackled. nice special teams tackle at the 27 yard line by chris jordan number 36 well, the pass interference call is called a lot. See how he kind of gave up on the play, he turned back so quickly, and that time the officials did not buy it, and Nick was on the officials. Of course, Alabama believes it was interference. Yep. Tennessee does it. The way the game goes. First down and 10 with 103 to go. Left side, Hardesty, Ontario, Hardesty. Well, coming up, we're going back for the Geico Halftime Report. Tim and Spencer joined by Aaron Taylor in the studio today. Here's the uh, first down, or the second down gain out to the 40-yard line. On second and three, that was Hardesty again. Safe, but remember, still three timeouts. All the timeouts left for Tennessee. Brompton into the flat. Caught by the tight end. They'll have to use one here, I would think. Now there it is. 26 seconds to go. Time called, volunteers. They trail by six. 26 seconds to go, first half, 9-3 Alabama. Volunteers now with two timeouts remaining. My advice to Lane Kiffin here is be very, very careful. It's a one-possession game. You don't want to have a turnover late in this half. Two receivers to the right side, one of whom now lines up in the slot. Crompton looks that direction, settles short for 
Gerald Jones, and uh, he gets the first down at the 47. Clock will stop as they reset the chain. There's nobody in college football that's better in the nickel package than Alabama. They are an offensive unit on defense. Robbie Green and Mark Barron of the deep man now, the safeties. Here's Crompton, fires it. Oh, great throw. Yes, it was. Caught. That's, oh, another first down at the 34-yard line. Great throw. Gerald Jones makes the catch. Timeout, Tennessee, with 10 seconds to go. You got to give it to Crompton. That was great coverage by Alabama right there. And he threw it right where it had to be thrown. First one was a safe throw. Kind of a delay over the middle against the zone. That was Eva, but watch this second throw. Gets inside Arenas, and look where the ball is placed, right there. We're back at Brian Denny. Volunteers with a first down 10. Quick foot left side, Gerald Jones again. He does not get out of bounds. He gets to the 30-yard line. So with one second left, a 47-yard field goal attempt, I'm assuming. That was engineered brilliantly. You know, I, I, I felt that it was a dangerous, risky move, but it was pulled off. Accurate throws by Tennessee, and now they can counter Alabama's great drive down to the two or three yard line with an opportunity for three themselves, and they get the ball to start the half. Think about the last two possessions for these teams. Yep. Alabama with 12, 13 plays and uh, two unusual calls inside the five, and they wind up getting a three. You know, I, I don't think that Julio Jones got that call because I think Julio Jones, with the player playing off, thought it was going to be a stop fade. He kind of just slowed down, and then Greg McElroy threw the fade, and it just didn't look right out there. So Lincoln on to cut this lead to three, a 47-yard attempt. Daniel Lincoln from Ocala, Florida. Remember the last one was low. Time called by the line judge. And uh, there's that call you don't like from the sideline. At least they didn't kick it. Nine three with a second to go. Daniel Lincoln from 47 yards out. To make it a nine six game at the break. Short. Short. I wonder if Julio Jones got a little tip on that. He was the guy jumping in the back. Because that ball died. Julio Jones is lined up about four yards deep, and he leaps. That's Jones right there. Nope, nope, it cleared him. Now Tracy's with Nick Saban. Thanks, guys. Coach, let's talk about your offense. The red zone struggles continue. Why on third and goal did you opt for the pass and not try and mash it in there? Well, you know, I... Hindsight's always 2020, so you know we probably could have went, would have went for it on fourth down too. But uh, that's behind us. You know, Julio's a great player. We're trying to get it up and make have him make a play. But you know, we just got to we're moving the ball. We're playing well offensively. We got to get straightened out on defense a little bit. But uh, I'm fine with the way we're playing. We just got to score more points. Speaking of Julio, six catches in the first half after not having a catch last game. What's been the difference for him? Well, it's the way they're playing us. You know, they got everybody in the box. They're trying to stop Mark. So. Uh, you know, Julio's getting a lot of single coverage and he's taking advantage of it. Thanks a lot, Coach. All right, thank you. From 1928 to 1994, this game was played on the third Saturday in October. Things were realigned recently, so here we are in the fourth, and here's Tracy with Lane Kiffin. Coach, down just six to the number one team in the country. What have you liked from your team so far? Well, we've been disappointed. We feel we should be ahead right now. We've got to play better. We're doing really well on defense. You know, we got to shut down the Wildcat. When they're in their base run game, you know, we're stuffing them pretty well. we got to shut down the Wildcat, and we got to score when we get down here. You know, they make their 50-yard field goal. We miss our 47. So, missed opportunities, and we're going to have to do all those things in the second half to win this game. Thanks a lot, Coach. All right, guys. See ya. All right, Tracy, thank you. Lee, uh, Lee Tiffin will kick off, and uh, Gary, you made the point. 
Here's uh, Tennessee now down by six. They've got the ball. Yeah, I, I think they've done what we talked about, though. They have done the little things, tackled well, done just no block punts, one interception. They're in the game. That's key. Tiffin will kick off. Oku and Richardson are the deep man. This is a short kick taken for 14. And a fine return out near the 28 yard line. That's New Keese Richardson. And uh, good field position. Now, what do you think of what Blaine Kiffin just said? Are they having trouble offensively? You know, they put 149 yards up against a good Alabama defense. I, I don't think, yes, they didn't push it in. They okay. missed a field goal. I do agree with the Wildcat. They do not have an answer for the Wildcat so far in this game. Their quarterback has done a decent job, but it's a challenge against this Alabama defense. It's not easy. Number one defense in college football. And uh, Tennessee goes up against them to open the third quarter. Here's Hardesty trying to get outside. Force back. Look at Cody. Look at Terrence Cody getting wide to the left to help on the tackle. Well, you know, he, he busted inside that time with penetration. I don't know whose block he ran through, but right in the middle, 62 right there. Watch him run right through McClendon's block, gets into the backfield, and then he runs down, goes to the point. Oh, that guy's going to make a lot of money someday. He <laughs> is the prototypical nose tackle. Remember Gilbert Brown? Oh, yeah. Yeah, looks like it. On second down, it's Hardesty, tackled by Nico Johnson. First half trends. Well, Ingram has done it. I'd say, you know, most of it has been, I think, in the Wildcat. Had a couple of runs. Jones got off six catches. I think they tried to force number seven, though, and that might have cost a touchdown. Jonathan Crompton hit passes. Not all of them, but you're not going to hit all of them against these guys. And how about that Bama defense? It's tough to put points against them. Third and five. Crompton incomplete. Good coverage by two men. Marquise Johnson. And there's a flag back in the offensive backfield. Uh, I, I think that time inside. Marcel Darius might have got yanked down as he came in on his rush that time by the center. Holding. Sullins. 66 offense. A penalty is declined. Fourth down. Yeah, Cody Sullins, one of the one of the twins, so Tennessee will give up the ball. Going to come right inside. Sullins kind of turns and just pulls him back behind. You know, it's kind of nice doing Tennessee. You say Sullins, he got a 40% chance of being right on the offensive line. <laughs> 50 50 though you're going to get the right first name <laughs> exactly can, isn't it funny to get two offensive starters here and of course the pouncy twins starting in the uh, Florida offensive line well, a big stop by Alabama three yep. and out to start the half Cunningham little, little or, rugby yes it was arena scoops it up at the 15 bounces off a tackle now watch out he's got a chance there's a flag I thought so it's going to be an illegal block in the back of the 34 yard line. It's going to wipe out the excellent field position. Yeah, I was wondering if it was going to be tripping on the play, to tell you the truth. Could have been either one. I'd, really? I'd, yes, okay. I, that's what I saw, but who knows? It, it was kind of a worth, if it was a trip, it was kind of a worthwhile trip because there was nobody else back. During the return, illegal block below the waist. Yes, that's ah. what happened. He threw himself at the wedge blockers. Let's uh, revisit this. It's going to be on the right side of your screen as Arenas bounces off a tackle there. Keeps going. Now watch the last defender throw his body at the wedge here. Yes, that's exactly what happened right there. Wide receiver Denarius Moore was the last guy back. Watch him throw. It's a good play, though, because he had to stop the momentum of the run right there and allowed the tackle from behind. Yeah, I thought I saw Ali Sharif, and uh, you're younger, better eyes. No, I, I'm just pushing on every punt. <laughs> 26 yards for Arenas. Here's Ingram. Morning. 
Well, we have made reference uh, from the uh, beginning of this day about the top ranked Alabama team. Here's the uh, progression for them. Started out fifth, then moved up to fourth, third as teams tumbled, and second. And then last week, uh, Florida struggled against Arkansas at home. Alabama won here. So uh, we yeah. should say now quickly that Florida's number one in the BCS. Yeah, and let's be clear, this poll has nothing to do with the BCS. Right. This is just a beauty pageant poll. It's not any component of the BCS. McElroy. Florida remains number one in the coaches poll. They are number one in Alabama second in the BCS. The first standings released last week. Savion Frazier with a tackle. And there are a couple of differences in the top five. See on your left, the AP poll. Alabama and Florida switch. Texas a solid third, followed by Southern Cal. Then Cincinnati on the left, Boise State on the right. The three polls that go. Coaches, Harris, and the computers. And the computers, yeah. I hesitated because I realized I was calling the computers a yep. poll. Upchurch, no on third down. Tell you, number 55 jumps out on the tape, and on this play, he jumps through the Alabama offensive line. Watch him right here. I think there's a push from the other side, too, but two Tennessee defensive linemen turn the ball into Rico McCoy to make the tackle. Great defense. That will bring on P.J. Fitzgerald after the Dan Williams play on fourth down and five. Dennis Rogan at the tip. In the end zone, touchback. Uh, not executed very well by the punt team. 9-3. Crimson Tide over the Volunteers. Now, this was the flyover right after the national anthem before the game began as the Jets buzzed Bryant Denny Stadium. And they're now, I recognize the guys in flight gear. Oh, the other guy's the former quarterback of the yeah, Jets. Yeah, the Jets. Hi, hey, there's the connection. Yep. Joe Willie Namath, a graduate of the University of Alabama. One of the things that uh, yeah, great, I really news, admire about him. Yeah, Mal Moore in whose box he is visiting right now, the athletic director convinced Joe to come back and complete his work for his college degree. And he did so about four or five years ago. First down and 10. From the 20, Gerald Jones is in the slot. The sweep comes to the, no, it's a bootleg, and Jones makes the catch. Nice play fake by Crompton as Jones crossed in motion. Tim, I'm just guessing that you will make that case before, uh, before too long. <laughs> That's true. Here comes the run to the left side. It's Bryce Brown, the freshman out of Wichita. Here's Take another the, look at uh, Crompton. Yeah, excuse me, Vern. The first down play, here's the sneak play that Gerald Jones is going to be lined up to the action and sneak behind the backfield. This is the play that gave Georgia so many problems. Flow one way, the sneak out of the receiver, the fullback, or the tight end the other way. That's the play that really burned Georgia. Second down and seven. Quick flip out into the right side. Catch made by Marcellus Teague. Double tight end set, Hardesty the running back. It's Hardesty, no. I don't, no he did not. He's not gonna get the spot for the first down. Well, Rolando McLean was there and Nico Johnson were there. The two linebackers inside. And that's what Lane Kiffin said. It's hard to run against this triangle. Size inside, three guys, that triangle right there. Nico gets the hit and cleaned up by McLean. Fourth down. Will they go for it or will they try to draw them off sides? Go for it. And get it. Yes. Got across the 45. It'll be first down. Tennessee. And on a quick snap count, you could see Alabama was not set on the play and they blew Cody out. 
That was nice job inside with the wedge blocking. Now the Sullen Twins were a part of that. 18 and 18 if you want balance. Tennessee's giving it to you. They'll come left this time. Cut inside. It's Hardesty. And Ontario Hardesty fights for a nice win. Remember the game against Florida, Avern, when Tennessee ran and kept pounding and pounding and late in the game and started to pay off? Not for a win, but they moved the chains. They ran left most of the game behind Chris Scott, number 79. He's another guy that jumps out on tape. He's an all-SEC preseason, all-SEC player, and he shows it when you turn on the tape. Second and three. Nine-three is the score. Left side, Bryce Brown. Mark Barron, number four, with the tackle. You know, uh, Trent Richardson is a much sought-after running back that Alabama landed. But Bryce Brown is the biggest recruit in the country last year, number 11 for Tennessee. He's starting to find himself as this season goes along, too. That's a nice one-two combination for Tennessee. And it's tough yards to get. Tennessee has run 30, 20 times for 55 yards just in this game. It's hard to come by. On average, Alabama gives up 63 per game. Here's Crompton into the flat, caught. That's Austin Johnson, number 40, the fullback. And Javier Arenas makes the tackle. Well, there's a quick little pop to the outside, and Chris Scott, who's done a good job run blocking, not a lot of yards, but he does a good job. This time, he's got Washington one-on-one -on -one and holds his ground. But you know, this was a pick play to the outside. Watch Reamer, excuse me, right there. Reamer got picked on the play, and it should have been called. Second and six, this is the ninth play of the drive. And again, they come left, and Scott is there to help provide the block. Hardesty, Orlando McLean makes the tackle. You know, one of the things that Rolando McLean has been forced to do now for the second year in a row, last year, he had a new player that he had to help, and it was Dante Hightower. Now, as we look at Dante right there, he had that injury, knee to helmet to knee. He was out of that game. But now, McLean is having to help Nico Johnson. So he's got to call the whole defense and then help Nico Johnson. They'll test the middle. And that will move the chains. The first down at the 31-yard line. Well, Hightower injured that knee injury in the Arkansas loss, or win rather, the Arkansas game. The numbers with him sideline. Yeah, the and it really hasn't popped up yet. Nick Saban and Kirby Smart told us because they haven't faced any tight end I formation running teams in, until this game. Ole Miss and South Carolina were more finesse. This is the first time they felt it would pop up. Old-fashioned eye on first down and 10 as Tennessee is moving. Play fake. Wheel route. Out of the backfield incomplete. Intended for Kevin Cooper, number 45. It's a nice job here by the Alabama defense, Nico Johnson, to react to the trick play. Jonathan Crompton made a decent throw, but a very tough throw for a fullback to handle. Thrown right over his shoulder. That's a tough catch for a wide receiver. But you know, it was decent coverage, enough that it wasn't an easy pitch and catch. And I think Lane Kiffin thought he might fool him there, and he didn't. Second and 10. Play fake. Pressure. Got him. Javier Arenas. They were waiting for it, weren't they? That was the game plan. We're going to take away the boot and sneak package. And they do it with pressure from the edge. Watch Javier Arenas right there. He's playing quarterback as he comes. My mean, he's got the quarterback, and he plays it perfectly. That's the first sack given up by Tennessee in the last two games. It's the 22nd sack of the season for Alabama, but their first 
today. A loss of 12. That call is made by the back judge, and that means one thing. Delay a game. Well, this drive was... Prior to the snap, delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Until the sack, Tennessee was marching, marching, marching. What is it? Matriculating down the field. Ooh, I like the Hank oh, Strand. Yeah, the old Purdue guy. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I always yeah, keep yeah, it right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You know. But after the sack, the change turned around. Hardesty and Ingram, you can see each 14 rushes to 13. Third and 27. No swing pass. Hardesty comes left. Fourth down. I think that was nice discretion by Tennessee there. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with a 30 to 35 yard gain with the punt rather than trying to gain 27 with the pass. Arenas will be back. See if Cunningham runs a little. Look at what Alabama does. Because of the low kicks, they put Julio Jones and Arenas back there so they can field it. Good strategy. Cunningham at the 35. Arenas. 20. Out near the 26 yard line. Ben Martin, number 99, down to make the tackle. It was the big sack by Javier Arenas. Minus 12 yards, and then Kareem Jackson on the third down play. Time call. And now Red Lobster presents today's Scholar Athletes, a double for you. Cody Sullins, one of the twins, a senior. Majoring in finance and a three-time academic call SEC and for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Rolando McLean, 3.02 grade point average. Dean's list the last two years. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. And Alabama comes out in the Wildcat formation. Most graduates on the 2009 roster, you saw that. Tennessee with 15, Alabama 13. They lead Division I. Well, we'll see if there's any adjustments to the Wildcat during halftime. This is Richardson. The talking point for Monty Kiffin going into this football game was on the right, Monty Kiffin, the great defensive coordinator for years in the NFL. You're looking at Nick Saban on the left. I don't even think, you know, these might not just be the two best defensive minds in college football, but maybe two of the top three or four defensive minds in all of football. Really? I mean, oh, of course, Nick yep. Saban and Monty Kiffin. Right. I mean, that's Belichick. There's only a few guys that can play defensive mastermind the way these guys can. Here's McElroy rolling out, fires it low. Julio Jones. Uh, Monty Kiffin elected to join his son. <laughs> he was upset. He had a perfect defensive call, and the defensive back just let McElroy get outside the pocket and get a positive game right there. What a terrific career. I mean, go, oh, yeah. going back to the... Uh, the early 70s when he was at Nebraska. Well, and, and I played against, well, he coached when I at Green Bay when I was with Detroit, and he was with the Vikings. I mean, he's gone back years and years, and he's just a great football coach. And But, you know, every time you talk to him, he says it goes back to basics. You have to tackle. This play is under review. Covered so well. And then how does that ball, well, he moves out of the way. <laughs> the defensive back moves out of the way. Looks like his foot was down from here. First look, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. See if his right foot's down. Yes, I think so. I think that's a completion. But isn't that amazing? The Tennessee player has the play stop and likes he moves out of the way to let the completion happen. 
Replay official today is Ben Oldham. The communicator is Rocky Good. And Julio Jones awaits, as do we, and here's the call. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch, third down. Third and short. Jones with seven catches, 54 yards. And this is after a game in which he was blanked. Is the keeper and appears to appears to have enough. See where the spot is. He got stoned to begin that thing. I'm not so sure. No. I don't think so. Oh, there was two spots. One official had it not made to the top of the screen. Right. This official to the top said he didn't make it. The bottom official coming in right here, the line judge said he did. They had different spots on the play, but I still think it's short. It is. Stuffed on the play, wasn't it? Great job inside by Dan Williams. That's the first time the Alabama line has not gotten a push in the whole football game. So Nick Saban will allow his uh, number one defensive unit to control field position. He's going to punt. P.J. Fitzgerald is on. Remember, he faked one against Ole Miss. Not this time. Dennis Rogan, fair catch. Grabs it at the 20. 43 yard punt. Nothing on the return. 2.10 to go, third quarter. If you love field goals, this is your afternoon. Nine three, two ten to go, third quarter. Alabama at home. And Javier Arenas with one of the key plays today. He's having a big day. Yeah, he did not play last week injured against South Carolina, but he had the sack here. He's been blitzing off the corner all football game, making plays in the backfield. And you know, interesting, Vern, I mean, Nick has got great credit and deservedly so for recruiting great players here. But it's three holdovers that have really been making plays from the shoe of the class. Arenas, we had offers from Florida International and Florida Atlantic. Eric Anders, who Nick told us, he said, I didn't think he'd ever be a contributor. And Corey Reamer, who was a defensive back and earned his spot on the field, all have earned playing time from the demanding Nick Saban. On first down, it's Tennessee at the 21. Handoff goes to Ontario Hardesty for the most part. Alabama has kept the hard-working Hardesty in check today. That time it was Eric Anders and Jackson. Tennessee's last drive, 13 plays, and then the big sack from Arenas. Right. But I do think, if you ask Lane Kiffin, if he would take a 9-3 game before he even came to Tuscaloosa, he would take it. Second down. Crompton with time. Jackson makes the tackle. The game is out to the 27-yard line. Gerald Jones with another catch. Gary mentioned uh, how Jones was missing from the early part of the season. Well, right in the middle, Cody Sullins against Big Mount Cody. That's a nice matchup. I'll tell you, they've been fun. They've been fighting the whole football game, those two guys. Third and four. Crompton quickly out to the right side, caught by Marcellus T. Boy, this, you could not, if you knew the defense, you could not have made a better call. Five-man rush, they did the bubble screen to the outside, caught Alabama in the perfect blitz. Give this one to scouting. Here's the bubble screen. Look, there's only two guys, three guys out there, three on three. Get it to them quick and run. Five-man rush, it's gone. Just pick, good blocking down downfield. Luke Stocker, the tight end, does a nice job. Gain of 13 and a first down. Crompton with a play fake. Again, he's got time. Finds his man. It's caught by Denarius Moore. 
and a huge game for Tennessee. Burn, you said it though. He had time. A first down play action pass, and that's why even though Tennessee has only ran the ball for 52 yards, it pays off in the play action pass. Moore runs a good route against Jackson again. He's owned Jackson in this football game, and the protection up front, look at that. Not a guy in Crompton's face, and Crompton finishes the third quarter with a big play. It's a gain of 33 yards, and Tennessee is on the move. They trail 9-3. That's the end of three from Bryant Denny. will return right after this word from your local station. As we went to the break at the end of three, I guess you could ask the question, which team's trailing? Well, it's, it, that's what Tennessee does every start of every fourth quarter. It's kind of become a new tradition for the Tennessee team. I think it's something USC does at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and Lane Kiffin has brought it with them. But the fourth quarter, we're here, and it's a one-possession game. And, you know, I think Lane, like I said, they're, they're behind, but I think he'd take a 9-3 game right now. And he's at the 30-yard line, so the threat of the uh, go-ahead touchdown is present. Crompton, deep handoff. Nothing doing on that play. Well, I just, uh, we had the long, long drive by Tennessee, and uh, we just got the stats. I, it's staggering to me, Alabama with that many first downs in the third quarter. Well, you know, both quarterbacks have completed 15 passes in this game. Right. But Crompton has thrown for almost twice as many yards as McElroy. So McElroy's been Deacon and Duncan. Crompton's been going downfield. It could be that the play action passing game has come through for Tennessee. Handoff Bryce Brown being chased by Woodall. And then Nico Johnson is up. It'll be third down. And it looks like two in a moment. Third and two with the 22, a 9-3 game early fourth quarter. Hand off. Close. Now the line judge on this. Oh, they, they're not running out at. Uh, I think. At, yeah, one guy's got it behind the line. On the look, same path. Just short. Yeah. Just short. Well, they go for it again. Remember last time they went for it on fourth down. With a quick snap. Crompton's got a little bit more bulk than Greg McElroy. And I think that's a good call. The knee was down. Mm -hmm. Fourth and a foot at the 20. Break the huddle in a hurry. The second surge to the left appears to have given Tennessee is first and ten. Yeah, yes. he, he, it was like a water finding a little crevice to go through this time. Up the middle, Cody has it stopped, and Crompton finds the cre little crevice to the left side. Yeah, fourth down, scoring for both teams. Tennessee. Fourth, yeah, fourth quarter, Vernon. Yeah, yeah, it, what did it, I say? Yeah, down. yeah, that's all right. Fourth quarter, and one team. 14, the other team 13, not bad. And there's a flag. Dead ball, all start. The offense, five yard penalty, still first out. Now the tough yards get even tougher against this defense. Remember, against Georgia, it was all boots, but the blitz has been coming off the edge to account for the boots. First and 15. Nice run. Hardesty stays upright and makes something out of not much. He's... Uh, Picked up about seven. You know, you got to give it to Monteria Hardesty. Remember in 2005, he 
He started and showed some flashes, and they had that knee injury and took a medical red shirt. He has just come on. He is the intensity for this Tennessee football team. That penalty really hurt. It would be second and about three. Bryce Brown gives Hardesty a rest. It's Bryce Brown. Nice step behind the line. There's a flag down. It's going to be third down. We'll see what the penalty might be. Umpire threw the flag. That's usually holding inside. Tis. Orlando Holy. 69 offense 10 yard penalty repeat second down check out why Rolando McLean is so valuable on this football team he reads the flow and then he goes back door and look him firm up and make that tackle after the holding call on Corey Sullins it'll be second down and 18 two penalties once they got the first down yep. at the 19. Denarius Moore is split. Here comes Arenas on the blitz. And a corner blitz from the other side, but Crompton gets up and heaves it. And Riddle knocks it loose. About the time the ball got to the receiver, Denarius Moore. I'll tell you, Alabama is holding onto their pants right now because both corners blitzed. It was a butt. Bust, look at Kirby Smart. He said, we didn't want to do this. Both corners, both corners, one up at the top, one at the bottom. They don't have that kind of defense. <laughs> Kirby Smart, they, a total bust by Alabama, and they got away with it. Jackson and Arenas. Here's the defensive coordinator at Alabama. <laughs> Third and 18. Kiffin hustled down and called time. Yes, he did. Good thing he's in shape. He ran it down and timed it with one second to go. First of three for Tennessee. We're going to catch our breath. Nine three Alabama. They've been on the field for a long time. I'm thinking of what Orlando McLean said to us yesterday. We played 80 snaps on defense against South Carolina yep. we're gassed and he said he didn't get his legs back until Thursday but they got a bye week next week you just got to gut it out it's for a national championship in this half Tennessee 26 plays Alabama six it's third and 18 Crompton drifts out to his right settles short it's knocked down fourth down Chavis Williams, number 55. Almost looked like he was spying on Crompton. Yeah, well, there was nobody to throw to this time. The, the Bama defense was spread out across the field. He tried to dump it to Hardesty that time, and actually it was a good drop because he wasn't going to make any yards. Daniel Lincoln will try and make it a 9-6 game. He's one of two today. Missed from 47. This one is from 43. Watch him come through. Boom, left side, puts his arm up. Oh, my goodness. He's moving a lot of body weight as he hits over. 
that's what they're in right here. Remember, the only touchdown drive against South Carolina was in the Wildcats. 68 yards, it was all Ingram. They're in the Wildcat. They're looking for their first first down of this half. Out to the 40-yard line. Rico McCoy with another tackle. McCoy in double digits with tackles. There's the guy who made the block. I don't know if Alabama can throw the ball out of the Wildcat, but Monty Kiffin has gone all in here. He put 11 people at the line of scrimmage versus the Wildcat that time. McElroy comes out. He'll go out of the spread. McCoy with his 11th tackle today. Trent Richardson is alongside Greg McElroy. Finds Smelly, the tight end. Rogan with the tackle. It's a nice read by Greg McElroy this time. This was the hole in the defense. Five man rush. The weak point was to the outside. I think it was a five man rush to the weak side and he put it right to the one spot that was vacated. Talk about ball control. Tennessee 27 plays. Alabama has run eight. They just picked up their first first down of the ball. McElroy quarterback draw. That's going to be another Alabama first down. Threw the ball to the left side. Now on first down. You know, this was not a quarterback draw. That was McElroy reading it very quickly, seeing he doesn't have anything, and taking the ball right up the middle. He better learn how to slide pretty quick. He turned his back. He's going to take one pretty hard. Gain of 12. Well, it looked like a quarterback. Yes, of course. It did. <laughs> well disguised. Thank you. <laughs> Here's the shotgun pistol. That's the quarterback five yards back. The handoff. Richardson comes left. And he's tackled for a loss at the 40-yard line. Uh, Spencer really likes Ingram. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Tim. Here's Darius Hanks going right. It's going to be third down and long. Well, a lot of things are starting to happen to Tennessee. They got down there in scoring position. Two penalties and a block kick. Right there, Art Evans had a tackle and he missed the tackle. Remember in the open, we talked about if you're going to solve this puzzle, you got to do the outside of the puzzle first, the simple things. Now the simple things are not happening to Tennessee and they're paying a dear price for it. Third and nine. Roy across the middle right into the umpire's midsection. Oh wow. Lathers with a tackle. Sometimes it happens. Dumps it to Ingram and runs into the umpire obviously. But on further inspection if he'd have gone to his first read Julio Jones they would have had a first down. Pick pass, Julio's wide open, look at him turn around, and then he looks to the bench like, what? And as a result, Tiffin's going to try a 49-yard field goal on fourth and three. Whoa. That's twice today that he's just gotten it through, and it makes it a two-possession game. Yep. He drives it again. He maxes out, but accurate as he can be. Here's Kiffin after the Tiffin kick. You know, and it's Lane said to Tracy, they made theirs, we missed ours. Never a doubt, right, Nick? 
How about the uh, Alabama drive? Gary? Well, you know, Tennessee was in position to get to this point where they could score. There was a penalty right there, a little movement. The first penalty, self-inflicted wound. Remember, we talked about it. You can't beat yourself. Then a holding penalty inside to take him out of field goal range by Tennessee. Another self-inflicted wound. Then all of a sudden, trying to take the field goal, blocked by Cody. The difference in the game, Burn. Kiffin makes them from 49 and 50. Tennessee misses from 47 and 43. If you flip it, Tennessee is winning nine to six. There's the Mountain who uh, blocked the field goal. Kiffin. Four for four. Oku at the 33 yard line. Now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Action Cam. Well, Cody's right there. That circle is big enough, but I didn't know for sure when I put it there for sure. But Cody gashes inside, gets his left arm up, and it hits him in the waist. That's a low kick. He's got a lot of waist, but that's still a low kick. He didn't even feel it. it was I, like a I understand. It was like a <laughs> First down and 10, Crompton. Reamer got a hand around, it's ruled incomplete. Now, the last two Tennessee drives, this is kind of staggering. 12 plays, six minutes and 37 seconds. The next Tennessee drive, 13 plays, seven minutes and 49 seconds. Well, you remember Urban Meyer accused Lane Kiffin of not trying to win the game. Late in that game, I, I, I think Lane subbed something back. I don't, I just just taking a chance here. I remember. Yeah, but you know, in this game, he's doing everything he can. That was out near the 39-yard line. Marcellus Teague and Javier Arenas. Well, that was back-to-back -back plays by Corey Reamer. He defended the pass on one, and then he ran out on the bubble screen. He made back-to-back -back plays. Reamer, who, again, Nick Saban said, I didn't think there was a place for Corey Reamer. He earned his way on the field. 34, under six to go. And it might be four down territory already. Blocked. Knocked backwards by Marcel Darius, number 57. Well, he's a monster. Sometimes you, some people have said he's a beast. He broke out against Virginia Tech, and he comes inside, a little twist inside, and then he pushes the offensive lineman right back into the throw. Was it Corey Sullins that time? And he pushed right back into the lap of Jonathan Crompton. So Kiffin will punt it away. He opts to uh, Saban, give it up to Alabama. Saban staying defense safe. He's not even bringing his guys. Arenas will let this one bounce and roll inside the five. See, by not by going defense safe, keeping his defense up front, he didn't have two guys back there, and that cost him the 20 yards of the roll. 12-3, 5:21 to go. You know, I wonder if Monty Kiffin, seeing it as a nine-point game, doesn't try to attack any way he can because the safety would be a huge play in this game right now. I'd be coming with everything I could. It may be your only chance of turning this game into a contest. Ingram is the only running back. And for the day, 14 carries for 75 yards. And Jones comes in. Now give it to Ingram. Squirts through. Huge play. 13-yard game. Well, Ingram talks about pressing the hole and trusting his offensive lineman. This time he presses the hole and runs right past Eric Berry. Eric Berry, number 14, misses the tackle. Ingram runs right through Eric Berry's run and the Berry family 
Hasn't had a lot of success here. Well, Eric's dad, James, played for Tennessee. His mom is here. His dad's uh, one of Eric's brothers had a middle school game, so he's still back home watching on television, I'm sure. Here's Ingram coming left. See, you can tell that Jim McElwain and Nick Saban, NFL thinking, no chances. A safety is, you know, a, a four minutes off the clock and a, and a punt is almost a win right here. Jim McElwain on the left, came here from Fresno State a couple of years ago. Offensive coordinator out of Montana. Nick Saban out of West Virginia, graduate of Kent State in 73, where he played for Don James. Second and six. Ingram and an injury update. Here's Tracy Wilson. Well, guys, two key defensive starters not out there for Tennessee. Dan Williams and Rico McCoy. No word on why the defensive tackle's not out there. As for linebacker Rico McCoy, he has a left knee injury. They put a brace on it two drives ago. He did play in that last drive, but obviously he doesn't feel he can give it a go. So they are both sideline right now. If I get any more information, I'll get it back to you guys. All right, Tracy, thank you. Time taken by Tennessee with 358 remaining in the game. Don't forget later in the game the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. Right now it's third down Alabama must stop for Tennessee. Roll out. McElroy bump in the back and no flag. Great read that time to the outside and a stop by this Tennessee defense and they get the ball back and you know right now they're thinking we got a chance. We score or kick a field goal and we go onside kick. So Ed Orgeron talking with uh, Monty Kiffin on the sidelines former head coach at Ole Miss. Here they come after him, and P.J. Fitzgerald goes down, and that flag is going to cost Tennessee. Came for the block. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, 19 of the defense. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, you know, you really can't complain. You went for it. They made a try, and they didn't get it that time. I mean, you know, it's a, it's worth the try. Chris Donald, number 19, is the guy who laid out, went for it, and just rolled into the lane. Now look at the smile. You bet. Oh, he's got good guns. Good guns. Hey, that's football sometimes, you sure. know. Well, you know, and you know what's going to happen here now is Ingram's going to get fed the ball a little bit, and he's at 94 yards. I think a 100-yard game is important for Ingram for the Heisman talk. Well, he uh, picked up a few right there. There's a fumble yeah, the ball and a loose was down. ball. Never fumbled he's before. He's never lost a fumble. In an Alabama uniform. Oh, he just almost gave him the Heisman, and he fumbles. It yeah, balls. It's out. Yes, yep. it did. Dennis Rogan was ripping it all the way down, too. Give it to your most solid running back, and it comes out on the play. Eric Berry had his helmet in the middle of it, and I think he was the one that came up with it. The play is being reviewed. Look at Eric Berry's helmet in there, and Rogan rips it out at the same time. Was his left knee down? It's so close. It's within inches. I thought that last look was the best look. I thought the ball was out. Rogan with the strip, 320-some touches, running and receiving. I mean, how about that? Back-to-back -back plays. Tennessee goes for the punt block. You get a penalty, and then this time you After give it to review, your most guy. The ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Tennessee. Well,
give it to the guy that has never fumbled, and he fumbles when you're putting away a game. He spent a few moments with us talking about ball security yesterday. Well, the only time he's fumbled at all was on a toss sweep last year against LSU. It was recovered by Alabama. And so, first down and 10, Tennessee. Jones in motion. Crompton. Marcel Darius. Well, he went right through the tackle that time. Aaron Douglas, number 78 on the right side. Right there, watch him go right through, arm through, and into Crompton. Seven yard loss, second down, Crompton back. Wants to set up a little pass to the left, which he does. It's Hardesty who is loose and tackled and dropped by Corey Reamer, number 13. That's a 16 yard gain. Alabama has not given up a touchdown in 190 minutes. Last one was Kentucky with 12.41 to go in that game, which Alabama won convincingly. Handoff left side. Corey Reamer again. Bryce Brown with the carry. This guy's had a great football game. He's playing the spot where Dante Hightower would play, and he comes up, reads it, goes back door, and makes the play. Great job. It is a first down, and it comes with 2.26 remaining. Here's the half roll. Great block on Lorenzo Washington. The pass is complete. Arenas with the tackle on Denarius Moore. That's a gain of eight. Second and two. Big hole. First down, Tennessee. Clock stops as they move the chain. Well, they got to get this ball into the end zone. There's no way Kiffin is going to trust Lincoln to kick another kick here. <laughs> He'll do it to win the game, but he's got to stick it in the end zone right now. Brown is a running back. He gets it, caught behind the line and dropped. This time it's Javier Arenas. Timeout, that's their last one. It comes with 146 remaining. Mark Ingram, first fumble lost, 322 touches. Well, this Alabama defense, as Vern told you, does not give up touchdowns because they've got playmakers. Remember the sack here by Marcel Darius. Now Tennessee survived that, picked up the first down with a screen pass and some nice runs, but they're still now second and 12 after the stop again. Tackle for a loss by the Alabama defense. One forty six remaining. Twelve three. Alabama. Crompton finds his man. Mark Barron makes the tackle of Luke Stocker. Number 88, that's a pickup of seven, third down. It's almost an all-throwing game now, it seems like to me, with a minute 20 to go. Crompton, pressure from behind. He's got a man open. This is Gerald Jones, touchdown, Tennessee. Football game, huh? Jones in the slot, very simply just comes across the field. It's zone defense for Alabama, nobody follows him. Nice protection that time for the Tennessee offensive line and they punch it in. Woodall came up to make the tackle, but way too late. Extra point is up and it is good. And it is a two point ball game with 119 remaining. Great protection. And we're going to get to see at the end of the game. You know, you got a good game when you see an onside kick. One nineteen to go. 
And uh, getting set for the onside attempt. The biggest play of the game made by the biggest man on the field. Well, after the fumble by Ingram, now it all comes down to the ball in the stomach. Gets him right there. Again, we talked about lack of elevation on the field goal kick, and Cody takes this one right in the underarm. The more, the more times you watch it, the more you see. <laughs> <laughs> and that blocked field goal attempt, the difference in the ball game. 12-10 with 1.19 to go. Tennessee out of timeouts. Alabama has just given up a touchdown for the first time since the Kentucky game. How about this? Julio Jones is in the front row, and Rolando McLean is in the receiving thing behind him. Lincoln. Tennessee, I think. Yes! Looks like Denarius Moore, number six. I'll tell you, Dennis Rogan, number 41, knocked Julio Jones out from catching the ball. Julio Jones is going to try to catch the ball, but Rogan does a great job making the play on Julio Jones. See him hitting him? That was what allowed Tennessee to get it. Now they need about, Tennessee does, 30 to 35 yards to get in field goal range. Crompton on first down. Hit as he lets it go, and it falls to the ground near midfield. Another look at the onside kick. Watch Dennis Rogan, number 41, right here, hit Julio Jones, who he thinks he has the ball. Since it bounces first, you're allowed to hit him. And he does. Second down. Jones and Teague near side. Bootleg Crompton being chased, fires. Caught at the 45 yard line by Gerald Jones. Gain of 15. Marquise Johnson, number 24, went for the ball. Look at that ball placement by Jonathan Crompton, right on the sideline, and Jones makes the catch. How about these Tennessee players making plays at the end of the game? It's been years. Back to Eric Ainge's days. First and 10. Motion. Yeah, the question is, was it the Alabama players causing the motion or does Tennessee get another five yard penalty. Before the snap false start 65 offense five yard penalty still first down. Josh McClendon. Daniel Lincoln. Career long is 49. He's one of three today. He missed one from 43 that was short. He had one from 47 that was blocked. He made you, one from 24. Yeah, it was the other way around. Yep. The 47 he was short on. Remember that. Crompton. Kareem Jackson tips it. Incomplete. Well, Kareem Jackson's been beaten a couple times in this football game, but this time he sells out and gets his right arm in on the play. Look at that play. Denarius Moore has beat him a couple times on that play, but this time, with everything on the line, it's Jackson winning. Jones and Moore, wide left. Teague, wide right. Blitz, Crompton, good block. It's caught. Luke Stocker, the tight end at the 27-yard line. 
Luke Stockers at Tennessee because he went to basketball camp and Bruce Pearl introduced him to the first for football staff. He's about 6'7", and he needed every inch of it right there. Clock running 44 seconds. That was a 23-yard gain. Well, this Auburn team undefeated, 7-0, ranked number one, Lincoln, hoping he gets a chance to try the game winner. It would be, a, what, about a 44-yarder right here? If I'm Lane Kiffin, I would ground the ball so it's real comfortable. Take a step back and ground it. Second down, five seconds to go. There you go. Daniel Lincoln, a junior from Ocala. He made one from 24. That's the one at the end of the half when he was short from 47. Then from 43, he doesn't get it up high enough and Cody gets it with his armpit. So Lincoln with another chance. The ball will be spotted between the 34 and 35. Nick Saban has three timeouts. 44 yard attempt. He'll use it. There's one. Here's what's on the line. An undefeated season, the top ranking. The last time Alabama was defeated in regular season play against Auburn at the end of the 07 season. Recall a year ago. They went 12 and 0 and then lost in a brilliantly played game between Florida and Alabama in the SEC championship. Then they lost to Utah. Yeah, Vern, Jonathan Crompton has been through so much as a Tennessee football player. But how about that last throw he made to Stocker the tight end? This was well covered down the road line. And he throws it in the perfect spot on the play. And that was Marcel Darius running with him, a defensive tackle. Four seconds to go. Lincoln for the lead. Blocked again. Cody again. Oh, my.